Yashar, Jasher, 60. And when the year came round, being the 72nd year from Yashar'el, going down to Mitzrayim, after the death of Yosef, Sipho, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, fled from Mitzrayim, he and his men, and they went away. And he came to Africa, which is Dinhaba, to Angius, king of Africa. And Angius received them with great honor, and he made Sepho the captain of his host. And Sepho found favor in the sight of Angius and in the sight of his people. And Sepho was captain of the host to Angius, king of Africa, for many days. And Sepho enticed Angius, king of Africa, to collect all his army to go and fight with the Mitzrim and with the sons of Yaakov and to avenge of them the cause of his brethren. But Angius would not listen to Sepho to do this thing, for Angius knew the strength of the sons of Yaakov and what they had done to his army in their warfare with the children of Esau. And Sepho was in those days very great in the sight of Angius and in the sight of all his people. And he continually enticed them to make war against Mitzrayim, but they would not. And it came to pass in those days, there was in the land of Kittim a man in the city of Puzimna, whose name was Uza, and he became degenerately defied by the children of Kittim. And the man died and had no son, only one daughter whose name was Jania. And the damsel was exceedingly beautiful, comely and intelligent. There was none seen like unto her for beauty and wisdom throughout the land. And the people of Angius, king of Africa, saw her, and they came and praised her unto him. And Angius sent to the children of Kittim, and he requested to take her unto himself for a woman. And the people of Kittim consented to give her unto him for a woman. And when the messengers of Angius were going forth from the land of Kittim to take their journey, behold, the messengers of Turnus, king of Bebentu, came unto Kittim, for Turnus, king of Bebentu, also sent his messengers to request Jania for him, to take unto himself for a woman. For all his men had also praised her to him. Therefore he sent all his servants unto her. And the servants of Turnus came to Kittim, and they asked for Jania to be taken unto Turnus, their king, for a woman. And the people of Kittim said unto them, We cannot give her, because Angius, king of Africa, desired her to take her unto him for a woman before you came, and that we should give her unto him. And now, therefore, we cannot do this thing to deprive Angius of the damsel in order to give her unto Turnus. For we are greatly afraid of Angius, lest he come in battle against us and destroy us. And Turnus, your master, will not be able to deliver us from his hand. And when the messengers of Turnus heard all the words of the children of Kittim, they turned back to their master and told him all the words of the children of Kittim. And the children of Kittim sent a memorial to Angius, saying, Behold, Turnus has sent for Jania to take her unto him for a woman, and thus have we answered him, and we heard that he was collected his whole army to go to war against you. Rather, and we heard that he has collected his whole army to go to war against you, 
and he intends to pass by the road of Sardunia to fight against your brother, Lucas. And after that, he will come to fight against you. And Angius heard the words of the children of Kittim, which they sent to him in the record. And his anger was kindled, and he rose up and assembled his whole army and came through the islands of the sea, the road to Sardunia, unto his brother Lucas, king of Sardunia. And Niblos, the son of Lucas, heard that his uncle Angius was coming, and he went out to meet him with a heavy army. And he kissed him and embraced him. And Niblos said unto Angius, When you ask my father after his welfare, when I shall go with you to fight with Turnus, ask of him to make me captain of his host. And Angius did so, and he came unto his brother, and his brother came to meet him, and he asked him after his welfare. And Angius asked his brother Lucas after his welfare, and to make his son Niblos captain of his host. And Lucas did so, and Angius and his brother Lucas rose up, and they went toward Turnus to battle. And there was with them a great army and a heavy people. And he came in ships, and they came into the province of Ashtarash. And behold, Turnus came toward them, for he went forth to Sardunia and intended to destroy it, and afterward to pass on from there to Angius to fight with him. And Angius and Lucas, his brother, met Turnus in the valley of Canopia, and the battle was strong and mighty between them in that place. And the battle was severe upon Lucas, king of Sardunia, and all his army fell. And Niblos, his son, fell also in that battle. And his uncle, Angius, commanded his servants, and they made a golden coffin for Niblos, and they put him into it. And Angius again waged battle toward Turnus. And Angius was stronger than he, and he slew him. And he smote all his people with the edge of the sword. And Angius avenged the cause of Niblos, his brother's son, and the cause of the army of his brother, Lucas. And when Turnus died, the hands of those that survived the battle became weak, and they fled from before Angius and Lucas, his brother. And Angius and his brother Lucas pursued them unto the high road, which is between Alphanu and Roma, and they slew the whole army of Turnus, with the edge of the sword. And Lucas, king of Sardunia, commanded his servants that they should make a coffin of brass, and that they should place therein the body of his son, Niblos, and they buried him in that place, and they built upon it a high tower there upon the high road, and they called its name after the name of Niblos unto this day. And they also buried Turnus, king of Bibentu, there in that place with Niblos. And behold, upon the high road between Alphanu and Roma, the grave of Niblos is on one side, and the grave of Turnus on the other, and a pavement between them unto this day. And when Niblos was buried, Lucas, his father, returned with his army to his land, Sardunia, and Angius, his brother, king of Africa, went with his people unto the city of Bebentu, that is, the city of Turnus. And the inhabitants of Bebentu heard of his fame, and they were greatly afraid of him, and they went forth to meet him with weeping and supplication. And the inhabitants of Bebentu entreated of Angius not to slay them nor destroy their city. 
and he did so. For Bibentu was in those days reckoned as one of the cities of the children of Kitim. Therefore, he did not destroy the city. But from that day forward, the troops of the king of Africa would go to Kitim to spoil and plunder it. And whenever they went, Sepho, the captain of the host of Angius, would go with them. And it was after this that Angius turned with his army, and they came to the city of Puzimna, and Angius took thence Jania, the daughter of Uzu, for a woman, and brought her unto his city, unto Africa. <laughs>